that's, uh, that's been our theme for the last couple of months, and we draw the, the specific focus to a close this morning uh, with one of the longest sermon titles that I've ever had. Uh, I would read it out, but half the sermon time's gone if I do. But the same sustained life-changing influence. When it comes to bearing testimony, bearing testimony to the Lord Jesus, most of us, I think in the humility of our faith, realise it's really only by the ministry of the Holy Spirit we can actually bring forward a testimony. And one of the things that that short passage that Jenny read for us reminds us of is that uh, the Spirit of God does it in such a way that it's not just stop-start, it's sustained. Now, I, that's the bit I wanted to pause on. Uh, it's, it's a sustained influence. It's, it's, he's, he's ministering, he's working the whole time. We're blessed to be in a place where here this morning we can be particularly conscious of the ministry of the Spirit in our midst because he's already done some really, really good stuff. But the thing that happens is that when we step out of this particular context of being gathered, he just keeps working. He doesn't, he doesn't say as we go, out there, oh, see you next Sunday. Yep, I'll be here. It doesn't work like that. We might, but he doesn't. He says, as Jesus very, very clearly described to that first bunch of disciples, I'll be with you every step of the way, always, not part-time, not through that season or that season, the whole time, I'll be with you. And so we can get inspired about that, uh, particularly when we realise, as the uh, uh, testimony of 2 Corinthians 3 reminds us that now the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom and we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image, the image of Jesus from one degree of glory to another for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Now you and I are so used to tangible stuff you know, we're so used to, I've got to be able to see it, I've got to be able to feel it, I've got to be able to wrap arms around it, I've got to be able to pick it up, I've got to be able to trade it in or whatever. But when it comes to a faith relationship with Jesus, we do well to move quickly to comprehending, catching on that the Lord is with us and that is a spiritual, deep spiritual experience and it gets deeper and deeper as the days go by. And as that is happening, there is this... Uh, it's not just being in a relationship with Jesus, it's transformational. It's changing us. Changing us. One of the things that came out of the celebration last night for John and Val was the recognition that over the last 15 years, the whole face of mission, mission right across the board, has changed dramatically. Like you and I know, our world's changed dramatically in the context, particularly technology and the political landscape and all that sort of stuff, it's changed dramatically. And there's a sense in which we can say, well, as Jesus follows, we need to be able to keep up with that. But yeah, that might be part of the picture. But more importantly, we keep pace with what he's doing in us. Not, not sort of drip, go along in my relationship with Jesus with my heels dug into the ground and you know, make it as difficult for him as possible but allowing the Spirit of God to do the things that only he can do. Well, it's part of something of what Paul was dealing with when he wrote to the church at Corinth, that he was uh, acknowledging, hey, there's a whole lot of issues happening in your presence, but this is one I just really want to highlight. I, want, I, want to, I just want to put it to you that you are actually in an event that is not only transformational for you, but you're actually making a statement into the lives of other people that could in fact turn out to be transformational for them. So it's not just about me. It's not just about my relationship with Jesus and how it's going. That's, that's awesome stuff and it's, it's a crucial part of it. 
But the bit is that Paul's reminding these people, he says, you're still, stealing, still dealing with some absolute rubbish that you need to deal with. But isn't it isn't amazing the grace of God says, I can deal with the rubbish and change you in the same moment. I can transform you in that next instant. Another degree of change in you. And that people will see Christ's likeness even more clearly. And so Paul reminds this group of Jesus' followers that they are a people who have just aligned themselves, so, as, so to speak, by their recognition, even though it was only a partial recognition of who Jesus is, that they are now ministers of the new covenant. And so he reminds them of this transformational experience that they're going through in order that they can be not just encouraged but they can actually turn around and say in that moment I changed in that moment when I just turned around I changed you ever thought about that you know sitting here and singing these beautiful songs this morning and the potter's hands. It's a beautiful, powerful image. And it does a beautiful transition, which is what, what Paul was doing with this group of people reading this piece of correspondence that he's been inspired to send to them. This group of people, he's, he's connecting them to that which was part of the old covenant. And he's helping them to say, to see that they've actually moved into a totally different context in their relationship with God. And he's reminding them that yeah, there's a big difference between the old covenant and the new covenant that you're now in. Are you tracking with me? Because you understand those terms, do you? Old covenant, that's the Old Testament, you know, big chunk of the Bible, two thirds of it's the old covenant. You think, what's it there for? Well, basically to give a total contrast to the new, to the new covenant. Because the old covenant was very much about, a, I suppose, an external influence that had the capacity to draw an external response. But it wouldn't necessarily strike the heart. It, it, it would tend to be something and too easily drift into the space of being something surface. chatting with a fellow yesterday who's uh, got a bit of a connection with the US and he was describing how he struggles to see the integrity of the Christian faith in, in the US picture that he sees. He says it all looks surface. You scratch beneath the surface and there's no integrity. And that's the thing that we look at in our Jesus following Jesus is when people scratch below the surface, do they see the reality? They discover, oh, it goes deeper and deeper. I didn't realise this. This whole relationship with Jesus thing, it's just going further and further. In actual fact, it's going right to the core of this person's identity. And you know, there's only one person who can change the core of who you are. And you can say, yes, it's Jesus. It's actually the spirit of Jesus. He says, that's where I've, I've made it possible. I've made provision that you don't just stand up and own my name. You can know my immediate presence with you. My spirit will be within you. And he'll just keep working deeper and deeper and deeper. This was, for some of the people in Corinth, this was new space. But he had this wonderful connect point. This wonderful connect point. This, this is one of the prophetic words that was spoken hundreds of years before to help people who were going through one generation after another of being the people of Israel, being the, the, the Jews, so to speak. And they're tracking through and these prophetic words keep jumping up and they just sit on the screen, just like that is now. And here's the... Uh, some of you might be in a position where you could rattle this off by heart. Go for it. Track with me. We'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a Gerald, if you like. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. 
My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with them, with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they no longer shall each one teach his neighbour and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. That's a beautiful word, just echoed down the generations. And, and it became, it was wrapped up with more and more prophetic word that became more and more sort of zeroing in to uh, just keep a lookout for an identity. And, and he'll have the name of Jesus and he'll be born. We're coming into the Christmas season. So this will probably make sense to you because we'll hear it again, probably for the 50th time for some of us. But this, this, is, this is the person, Jesus. He's the one who's going to make it possible for you to have a spiritual relationship with a God who is spirit, that he will actually establish this deep, life-transforming relationship with you. So Paul gets a little bit animated. You can't always see it in the black and white, can you? You really, uh, one of the things that I've always been encouraged to do is say, the, 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 through these people who teach you preaching and stuff like that, and, and they say, immerse yourself in the word. And I think, I always wondered what that meant. But I, th I think I'm catching on. It just, it just takes me a little bit longer than some people. You've probably caught on already. But you know, just be gracious. Let me catch up. Right? But the Lord is just making this wonderful provision for these people to experience, as it were, the present day ministry of the Holy Spirit. And he is, now, uh, again, I'm anticipating that you can recall bits and pieces, of, particularly of the New Testament, that write extensively about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. All right? Now, I have an aversion. I have an aversion. I have a propensity. Which one is it? I, I tend to create lists. Do you like lists? No? Doesn't matter then. Just take my illustration and leave it if you don't like it. But the list of what the Spirit of God is looking to do all the time within us is amazing. It just goes on and on and on. But it's all about affecting this inner transformation, this change from one degree of glory to another. So, for example, this is three of the list of 15 or so. He opens our eyes to see Jesus in the first place. Love that little song? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes. Oh, let's sing it. No, let's experience it. Open my eyes that I can actually see, whether it be coming off the pages of the testimony of the word or in the lives of people such as Fiona and Val, and I better not go any more names, but I can rattle off 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 in this room. Or more. Let me just count for a minute. One, two, three. <laughs> but there is these, these beautiful little sort of prompts that can say, I can see in you the glory of the Lord. I can see in you. That's a different perspective on your Christian brother and sister, isn't it? And it becomes increasingly real as we discover that we have this face-to-face -face relationship with Jesus and when he looks at us, that penetrating gaze is transformational. It can be confrontational, but it's always got that intent to transform our lives from one degree of glory to another. So take, Paul takes a little sidetrack for a moment or two and looks at what it was like for Moses. Now, track with me just for a moment, then I'm going to come back to our point of focus. He points out what used to happen for Moses. Now, this is Old Testament stuff. For those who haven't read it, it goes something like this. Moses is called into a very significant leadership role uh, within the people of God, tracking around the Old Testament. He's got this leadership role that the Lord's made wonderful provision for him to meet God, Moses, the scripture describes, face to face. 
And what transpired was this location that Moses used to go to while all the people are dream- you know, dwelling in their tents over here, he would have this little, what was called a tent of meeting. And he'd wander out from the camp where all the people are and he'd go into this tent and he would meet, as the script goes, this amazing thing of a face-to-face uh, conversation, engagement with God. And he would come out of the tent, his countenance would be glowing, literally glowing. And he knew very, very, very much within himself, he says, that's not going to be sustained. That glow's going to just fade fairly quickly. You ever find that out after church? You know, just a little bit of faith. Well, the Lord's made provision, this is what I'm reminding you of this morning, for a sustained glow. The evidence of Jesus working in you by his spirit all the time. So Moses used to cover his face so that people didn't see the, the glow fading, so to speak. And see, so there's this little mix of imagery that Paul's using uh, to illustrate something that he's, that he, the, the point that he's making about a relationship with Jesus will mean the spirit of God's working within you. That what is emerging, what is being uh, presented from your life, will be in a sustained fashion increasingly like the identity of Jesus. So he, he punches up towards the end, and, I, and I've, uh, that's where I'm going to now, this uh, lovely big but uh, in, the, in verse 16, this really neat transitional, he's just rattled off this little bit about Moses in the Old Testament, and now he says, this is the totally different picture, you know? It's actually about your relationship with God and how that relationship is going to be sustained. Not by your human endeavour, but by every amount of space that you make provision for the Spirit of God to work in. He will make it, as it were, uh, increasingly evident of the validity and the integrity and the dynamic of your relationship with Jesus and he will make it possible for you to see more and more clearly every time as it were you come into a place of revelation that the Spirit of God leads you into. Paul talks about that when a person turns to Jesus and appreciating that he's talking to people with this strong Jewish tradition and he says Every time you turn to Jesus, the veil will be lifted. You will actually see. You will actually receive revelation. You will actually become more and just clearer and clearer on the identity of Jesus. The veil will be lifted. And there will be a light that is of a spiritual nature will be shone literally into your life. And it will continue to be transformational. You'll notice that I have uh, an inclination from time to time to quote a song that we are all familiar. I've already done one this morning. But can anybody remember that? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Lovely song. Is it still the one you're singing? Or are you singing, shine Jesus, shine? The fire blaze. Let the glory of who you are, Lord Jesus. And I believe that's, well, it's certainly something I look out for. Yeah, my little light can shine. That, that, that's valid. But I want to see it blazing. I want to see the body of Christ where there's this whole field of people who have this intense fire that's stirring within them and we'll see people of all ages as it were turning their eyes toward Jesus and experiencing that transformation for themselves and it's happening one thing I shared with you a few weeks back uh, the testimony of uh, mobile mission maintenance part of their work in northern Queensland uh, and of how an indigenous pastor was uh, doing a work there and clearly the Lord's in it and they had 120 baptisms in one day. Remember that little story? Okay. 
Well, believe it or not, this is a downscale version numerically, but it was just as exciting. Headed off the convention last week, and you've got a report on the convention in the newsletter that Grant Spangenberg very graciously has written for us to get a bit of an idea of what was happening there. But in the midst of convention, there's often what I used to hear people say, hi, oh, it's good to catch up. If that's all that convention's about, I think I might find somewhere else to go. But if it's catching up to share the experience of an ongoing revelation of what Jesus is doing, I was pretty excited because when I saw the initial theme for the convention, which was, pardon me, um, celebrating uh, participation in renewal, and uh, well, just something we look forward to. There's always that wanting to see the renewing process within Christian community with, with all the venture of being who we are in this time. So I had this anticipation about convention and it certainly happened uh, for me. I just appreciate being there and the things that were happening, my, as it were, my renewing of understanding of, of our relationship in mission, appreciation of the leadership that we have at conference level, the strength and connect spiritually uh, amongst our communities and the building trust and the sense of anticipation. And then of course you listen out for a testimony and this happened. I met this bloke on the on your on the left hand side of the screen. There is Joel Plotnick. Now I've, I've known Joel as a, a result of living in Melbourne for a number of years. Joel's a part of uh, Churches of Christ Financial Services, uh, and you know, numbers cruncher man. But he's also part of a Jewish community, a Messianic Jew community that meets in Caulfield, in uh, Victoria. I said, I asked Joel, you know, how's, it go, how's it going in the sense of that community, which was sort of like a, uh, an emerging church plant a few years back. And he says, well, like the rest of the churches, we're working through COVID. Just a month ago, we did have a little celebration though. He says, we had 17 people baptised coming out of that Jewish tradition and they'd been led in to see who Jesus is, and now they're choosing to identify with him. And I'm thinking to myself, this is awesome. And it is. It, you know, the Spirit of God moves, and we're looking to see how he might do it my way. And, and he's saying, oh, the, the spaces that are open to me is where I'll move. And it's, it's, um, it's just, it was just, to me, it was sort of like the icing on the cake, so to speak. It wasn't long after that that I had to actually leave the convention because of another appointment later in the day. So I was pleased to head away, having so many things happen in that context and having this continued anticipation. Now, says Paul, let's get, let's get back to what I'm talking about, he says. And he says, now in your context, in our context, in, in, the, in the scene in which we are now living, Victor Harbour Church of Christ, 2022, November 27th, here we are right now. And so he brings forward again this testimony of the Spirit's work. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom, there is releasing happening. And so Paul is going back to that and it's a perfect match because you and I know that one. Where Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, when the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. The spirit of God says, I'm going to do exactly that. Because the amazing thing is, it's the same person. The human ministry of the identity of Jesus in history, he says, I'm going to make possible for my ministry that's happening here now to actually continue into generations after generation after generation until I return and then it takes on a whole new dimension again. But it's where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. There is freedom. There is revelation. I used my illustration a couple of weeks ago of going to the optometrist. It's always good to have your vision checked. So as you don't run into something, or walk into something, or trip over something. Well, that happened too, didn't it? Was that? No, that's because it was dark. <laughs> but I go along to the optometrist. See, anybody been in, done that little machine? Sit at the chair, put your chin on, and what do you have to do? You have to focus on the dot in the middle of the screen. 
with the whole idea to check your peripheral vision, you could then pick up little flashes of light that go over here and over there. But the important thing is, stay focused on the centre. Right? And that's where we see this amazing ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's showing us things, but he's saying, stay focused on the centre. They're a part of what I'm doing, but if I go to look at over there, bang! So, sorry, Sonia. It's, it's again where that Hebrews text comes in and says, fix your eyes, fix your gaze on Jesus. You know, the beginner and completer of our faith journey. And so we watch and revelation comes, but it will always, we're always checking to see that it orientates to the centre of my faith focus, the person of Jesus. I must finish. And you can all talk quietly so you've got plenty of voice for the big hymn sing this afternoon. But transformation is an awesome experience. And it's something that Jesus has made provision for. We celebrated again this morning very much as something of a starting point where I recognise that completed ministry of Jesus. He says, yep, yeah, that bit's completed. Now I've made it possible for you to experience every bit that works out of that completed work. That you can be made complete. That you will be changed at the very depth of who you are. Mind, thought, feeling, reflections, ambitions, the whole bit will be transformed so that it aligns itself with the identity of Jesus. And that particular poem that was read for us this morning by mother and daughter will be owned by a whole community of people because that's what I want. It's what I desire. It is more than that now. It's actually my heart inclination because the word's been written on my heart to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. This hope, this anticipation possesses me.